I'm going to show you how to create these five complex looking backgrounds using simple techniques, all in After Effects. Let's begin. In this series, I'll be breaking down these backgrounds starting from this one. This is a partnership with Adobe, so the other four videos are on their channel in their Essential Workflows playlist. There'll be a card and a link to that down in the description, and they're already uploaded there, so you don't need to wait at all. This project file is also available for download for free down in the description so you can take a deeper dive. Now I have three layers of comps to this animation. This is the top one where all of our head animation and elements are. And this is a 10 second comp where the background changes every two seconds. And then we have our background comp, which has all five of our backgrounds, which we'll be exploring. And the only animation on these is I've keyframed some of the scales. So they all scale in very slightly just to make it look a little more intense. And these comps are all at 4K resolution as well. So we can zoom in on them without any loss of quality. Now let's dig into our first effect. Now this warping digital effect is all on one layer. This layer at the top here is our color palette, just so I can see and select colors easier. So let's get rid of this bottom layer and start from scratch. All right, first we need to create a new solid and we can do that by pressing either Control or Command Y and its color doesn't matter, but let's name it Mosaic because we always label our layers. And the first effect we're gonna to apply to it is Fractal Noise. And it generates this pseudo random black and white noise pattern that we're going to use to drive this effect. First, let's increase the contrast to 150. So it's just a bit less subtle. And this is looking a bit small and fiddly. So let's open up its transform properties and increase the scale from 100 up to 300. There we are, much bigger. And we need this to animate as well. And we can animate fractal noise by using its evolution property. So if we drag that up, we can see our noise is now evolving. Now we could keyframe its evolution, but this is the perfect place for a really simple expression. So let's hold Alt or Option on our keyboard and click on the stopwatch next to evolution. That'll bring up our expression window. And in here, we're gonna type time asterisk 400. And that means time multiplied by 400. And now if we play it back, it's animating. Now in this expression, time gives this composition's current elapsed time in seconds. So it's really just a consistently increasing number. And then we're multiplying it by 400, so it increases faster. If we change that to time times 800, the evolution is gonna be twice as fast. And this is really useful if you just wanna increase a value consistently. Now, another thing we can do to this effect is decrease its complexity. Let's take that from six down to three. And we're doing that here because that is gonna save us some processing power and rendering time because the effects we're gonna to apply to it later don't really need it to be this complex. So the next effect we're going to add is mosaic. And let's toggle down our fractal noise effects as well because we don't need to see all of that. Now mosaic is the effect that you apply when you want to pixel out someone's face or some unapproved logos in a music video. So we just get a pixelated version of whatever's underneath. Let's increase the horizontal blocks from 10 all the way up to around 50. And essentially what we're doing here is increasing the resolution by giving it more blocks to work with. Let's actually take down the vertical blocks down to eight. So we get little strips rather than perfect squares, which I think gives this a more interesting look in this case. And of course, try different values in all of these. These are all super adjustable. So you'll get some nice variations once we're done. Now in this mosaic effect, we're getting a lot of grays and not much black and white. And that's because it's averaging the color values of the pixels underneath. And even if there's a high contrast underneath, that's gonna even out and get muddied to a gray a lot of the time. But we can counteract that a bit by just selecting sharp colors over here. So we get a bit more contrast. And now let's add some color. And we do that by adding the effect CC Toner. And by default, this is brown, using three colors as a tritone here. So it leaves the highlights as white, all our whites are still white, all the shadows is black, all the black areas are still black, but all of the grays are this brown color. So let's get some vibrant colors instead. Let's put our color palette layer on top and make that visible. And then back to our mosaic, let's change it from tritone to pentone. And then I'm gonna select some of the colors here from my color palette. And now we've got a very colorful, glitchy, pixelated noise pattern. And the very last effect we're gonna add is twirl. And by default, nothing is happening. But when we increase the angle, things get very spirally. And they will keep getting spirally until it just starts to look like a whole bunch of concentric rings. That's, uh, that, that's I think, too far for us. So let's take it all the way back. And let's keyframe it at the start at a value of about 50. And then at the end of the comp, let's increase that to maybe 250. That's sufficiently distorted, I think. And we can also increase the twirl radius so it twirls more of our comp. And let's take that, I think about 38 is good. 
And this does peel away at our comp so we can see the black background underneath. But we can easily fix that very sneakily. And what I'm going to do is duplicate this mosaic layer with Command or Control plus D. And then on the one below at the very bottom, I'm just going to select twirl and delete it. So we get the untwirled version in these little black areas. And that is really fine. No one is going to notice that. And we're going to be zooming in on this anyway. So if we head back into our background comp, let's just keyframe its scale at the very start at 50%. And then at the end here, all the way up to 100. So now there's a subtle zoom in and it just looks a bit more intense. And we're done. Here's how that looks in our main comp. To learn how to create the other four background effects, head over to Adobe's Essential Workflow playlist. Why not head over right now?